I'm Carolyn, your host, and welcome to this week's weekly mini, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous weekly minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you at the end. If you know someone who should hear about today's topic, be a friend and tag them or click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Today, we're thrilled to bring you a special best of presentation with Acrobatic Arts Master Teacher Cheryl Crawford and her assistant Megan McCullough, taking us back to the basics with bridges, handstands, and cartwheels. Cheryl started dancing um, at the age of five, and by the time she was 10, she was obsessed. She would go on to train at the Theater School of Dance and Drama in Edinburgh, where she studied RAD Ballet, ISTD tap and modern jazz, contemporary singing and acting. She graduated with her RAD teacher status in 1999 and in 2001, she started her own studio. You can do the math and approximately 21, 22 years later, she, uh, her studio offers ballet, tap, jazz, cheer, contemporary, and her new favorite, acrobatic arts. Cheryl is also an acrobatic arts course conductor and examiner, and we're thrilled to have her contributions as part of our global team. Now, this is a pre-recorded best of episode, so we will join Cheryl now in her studios in Glenrothes, Scotland. Let's queue up the recorded presentation. Great. Okay, so let's start with um, the handstand first of all. So what we want to think about in our handstands, what I think is most important is the hand placement. So we want to think about our hands being directly underneath the shoulders. That's where you're strongest. Um, so we're going to be right up underneath your shoulders and we have to make sure that the shoulders press right up to the ears okay and that's really going to engage the muscles and make us really stable in our handstands okay so i'm going to have megan so what we're going to do first of all this is what i like to do with the handstands is we're going to lunge because it's really important to lunge into the handstands because again that's going to give it a little bit more control all we're just going to do is place our hands down now i say to the kids kiss and thumbs that's how close together i want their hands to be and all I'm just going to do is kick the back leg. Let's start a nice tall first, Megan. I want her to start in this nice good posture. She's going to kick the back leg up and she's going to return to this nice posture. So we're going to kick and back. So all I'm doing to begin with is training the start and end position. I think they're both really important and they're often forgotten about. Okay, let's go again. So we're going to place the hands, kick and back up. And each time she does that, she's looking right behind her. We want to be in a straight handstand. The head is in line. Okay, so once she's mastered that, then we can take a little um, kick up. So we're going to take the, the bottom leg up a little bit. So we're going to kick. So we're just transferring the weight onto the hands. Okay, let's do that one again. Good. And each time I'm making sure that her thumbs are close together and just pressing the floor away. Press the floor away more, Megan. Press, that's it, she's gone even higher. So we're now into the L handstand. Each time she's coming back to that nice um, tendu de bon. So then we'll take that leg up in, into a pre handstand. So the legs are going to cross at the top. That's it, and down. So what we're looking for, I'm just going to hold Megan upside down here for a moment, is we're looking for the hand right underneath the shoulders. The head is in line, it's looking at the wall behind her and making sure that her ribs are closed and just pressing the floor away. You, you could probably see her, she could wear my arms there. She's gonna come back down. Okay, then we can take that up into a straight handstand with the feet side by side. So we've got the tendu de bomb, we're gonna lunge into the handstand, placing the hands down, kissing thumbs. We're looking down at the wall behind us. We're pressing the floor away. Okay, Megan, off we go. Into that straight handstand and we come back down again. Making sure that your students come back down. The last leg to go up is the first leg to come down, so we're not switching the legs up there, which is why we start with the pre handstand because they know which leg comes back down again. And let's take that um, one last time, Megan, please, your straight handstand. So we're looking for hands, head, ribs, pressing the floor away. Good job. Make sure when you're uh, doing handstands with your dancers that you only give them a couple of corrections, okay? Because while they're upside down, everything's back to front and the wrong way around. Don't give them too much to focus on. So if, you, if it's their, their um, tummies, you could have them lie down. The tummies are back to them, lie down on the front. Let's not have your front here, actually. And place your hands forward in the handstand position. And every time I make this nice hollow shape here, 
Okay, and that, that's really going to help keep this nice, strong core. Okay, and come back up. So now when you're on your hands down, think about that position. That would be good. Well done. And coming back to that tongue to bottom. Okay, so let's move into the cartwheel now. Okay, so the cartwheel, we're going to start squared on to where we're going, and then we're going to open up to face the front in the first split. We're going to nice center split. Um, I'm going to transfer the weight at the end, that's really important. So we're going to start turning to the bum. The hand placement is still really close together. Still, I'm saying to them, feel your ears. That's how close together you want our arms to be. Let's have a look at your cargo first. Okay, so go up, up. That's it, transfer the weight at the end. We're looking for a really wide split. The split needs to be about 180 would be ideal, okay? We don't want what we call an A-frame, which is when the legs are way up here. And also the speed of the leg is really quite important, especially the first leg. This cartwheel one day is going to uh, turn into an aerial, so the legs need to go over really fast. Let's go one more time. Let's have a look at how fast, come forward as many as And let's have a look at how fast that first leg goes. That's it, good job. And the hands are nice and close together. So what we're looking for in the cartwheel is a really strong core again. You're going to find that a lot of your kids have learned how to do cartwheels out in the playground. They've been doing them for maybe years before they come to you in the studio. So there's a lot of bad habits in their muscle memory that you have to get rid of and that's quite hard to take those away. So what you want to do is really tighten up their core. Um, I often find their head placement, it's optional on a cartwheel, they can be looking straight through or they can be looking at their hands. If they're looking at their hands, let's um, go kind of diagonal and come towards me this way. So maybe we're going to look at our hands this time. I'm just going to have quite a curved back going on here. So she fixes the head placement. That really um, straightens up the back there. Okay, so I often tell the kids to look through your hands. And also it's nice if they're looking at the audience as well. And eventually when this car really becomes an idiom, that's in their muscle memory to smile and look through their arms again. again. Okay, let's take that car wheel again. Let's go from the side. Okay, so we're tongue to the bottom. The hands are going to be nice and close together. She's going to look to the front this time. She's still going to press the floor away and she's got a really wide split with a fast leg. Off you go. Okay, good. Now we're going to speak about the end. We're going to speak about the transfer of weight at the end. That's really important to recover the upper body. And we start this transfer of weight way back in primary, so it becomes um, natural to the end of the cartwheel. But what we can do even is place your hands on the floor, that's it, and then just go from there into the recovery. Up, up. That's it, that's an exercise all by itself. Down we go again. And up, up. Good, okay, let's do that at the end of our cartwheel now. And recover. That's it, good. And you want that recover to be solid, not wiggling all over the place. Okay, so just to recap in the cartwheel, the hands close together, head is optional, but looking through the arms is going to correct a curvy back, a nice strong core, pressing the floor away, a really wide split with a fast leg, and a recovery at the ends. All right, let's move on to bridge. So what I see a lot in bridge is the dancers are going to go back like this. They're just going to sink in their lower back. And teachers, if you try that, that's really quite sore. You'll feel what they're feeling. And it's our responsibility to look after our dancers and their bodies. So we're going to educate them how to um, do bridges properly. So we're going to start with our feet hip width apart, our feet in our parallel, and then a good strong core again. We're going to take the arms forward. And what we're going to do is we're going to lift the arms up to the ears, and then I'm going to ask the dancers to grow. Okay, and I like to use imagery with the dancers. I tell them that they are, they are like one of those drinking straws or the plastic ones that you lift up and pull over. You don't really get them much anymore now. Um, that's how I want their spine to go. Okay, so let's take the arms up and watch her grow. Grow. Okay, so what she's done there, she's separated all the vertebrae. Now we can go backwards. As she goes backwards, she's going to press the hips forward. The hips need to stay above the feet to counterbalance the fact that all their weight is going backwards. And what they're going to try and do is keep their legs straight for as long as they can. Probably until they're about halfway down they can keep their legs straight and then they could bend a little bit to go down. And we're looking for the hands coming quite close to the, the feet, not too far away basically. 
Okay, so let's have a look at your down to bridge Megan. So we take the arms up. We're going to grow, we're going to look back, press and hip forwards, and down to the floor. Now, once she's there, she's going to press into her shoulders. That's it. So once you're down on a bridge, what we didn't do is walk the feet away, because that's that's a bit of a pointless exercise. What we're going to do is press into the shoulders and open up that the shoulders and thoracic area of her spine. If she was to move the feet away, she wouldn't be able to either kick over too well or recover because our feet are now too far away from our hands. You will notice Megan's popping her heels at the bottom here. Okay, so this we find if we do a lot of calf stretching, that's going to stop the heels coming off um, the floor. Sometimes it can be down to tight hip flexors also, which causes the heels to pop. Sometimes a mixture of both. Okay, let's look at that bridge again. So it's really important to start with good posture. Feet hip width apart and parallel, arms forward. And have them take the time to lift the arms up. We grow. We look back, pushing the hips forward. Hands down, press into the shoulders. Making sure that we're now tracking our knees from the hips. Our feet are still parallel, arms are straight. Then to come down, we're going to tuck the head and we're going to lower to the shoulders. When they are pushing up to bridge, just lie down for a moment, if you can, please. Try and always encourage your dancers to push up from this position. Um, this is ideal. It's also going to build strength and equal muscle development on both sides. So if you push up to bridge, that's it, good. And then come down for me. And if you sit up and show me how I would not like you to go. So this is what, how I do not like the kids going up to bridge. Okay, you're working one side of the body, you're going to build up a lot of muscle on one side and not the other. And that's going to become a problem later on in some skills. So always have them push up from the floor or going down to bridge. Alright, up we jump Megan. And that is our handstand cartwheels and bridges. Wow, Megan. Pretty amazing. Thank you so much to Megan and Cheryl for that presentation. Uh, certainly so much for us to consider and offer in terms of fundamentals because at Acrobatic Arts, we love fundamentals and this great opportunity to take us back to the basics and review some of those key uh, steps, progressions, and things we need to look at when we're helping our students. So thank you so much to Cheryl and thank you so much to Megan for her awesome and amazing demonstration skills. If you are interested in learning more uh, about fundamentals, safe progressions, incorporating acro dance and improving your current acro program, visit acrobaticarts.com to explore so, uh, such opportunities as our module one teacher training. Now, if you're certified already, make sure you're using all the options available to you and level up. We're adding courses globally every day. Thank you again to Cheryl. Thank you, teachers. Join us again next week. Bye.